So we've seen how to compute the exterior derivative of a function. Now what we want to do is look at how to compute the exterior derivative of a one form. Recall that the wedge product, which we thought of as a, as a multiplication on as a multiplication on one forms or forms. What that gave us was, if I draw a picture, if I was to look at a vector which I think of as a one form, so I think of this as omega, this as maybe eta, then I can look at the parallelogram formed by these one forms and the area to be precise, signed area, meaning it can be negative, is given by omega wedge eta. So the key properties of the wedge product were that if we had, let's say, f dx wedge g dy, so we have f and g being functions, then we could just bring the functions to the front and we would have something like this. The other key property we saw was the anti-symmetry, namely dx wedge dy is minus dy dx, which in particular implies the nilpotence property, which is that dx wedge dx is zero. Okay, so let's look at this example of computing the exterior derivative of the one form omega, where omega is 2x to the 9 minus log ey dx plus dy. Okay, so the trick is to just look at the component functions and compute the exterior derivative as per normal. So if I let f be 2x to the 9 minus log ey, then I know that the exterior derivative is just 18x to the 8 dx minus 1 over y dy. Remember, I just take the x partial derivative times dx plus the y partial derivative times dy. Now, if I look at g, which is 1, then I have that dg, well, the x partial derivative is 0. The y partial derivative is zero, and so dg is zero. Now, to compute the exterior derivative of omega, what I find is that I just insert my expression for df, so the first component function is 18x to the 8 dx minus 1 over y dy. But now I have this dx term, which when I pair two forms, I have to wedge them. And I computed the exterior derivative of one, that was zero, so I'll have zero coming from there. I don't have to worry about the wedge product in that case. Now if I expand this out, what I get is 18x to the eight dx wedge dx minus 1 over y dy wedge dx. But now we see we have a dx wedge dx here, and the nilpotence property, which is this first property here, tells us that dx wedge dx is 0. So what I have is minus 1 over y dy wedge dx. And because I prefer to have dx wedge dy as opposed to dy wedge dx, Although this is perfectly correct, it, it'll be important to kind of order them later. We can write this as 1 over y dx wedge dy. 